So Kelly J. Keane, a.k.a. Posey Parker, is the founder of Standing for Women, a global women's rights campaign group. She is a woman, a mother of four, and a free speech advocate. She first came into the public eye when interviewed under caution by the British police for speaking out about the transitioning of children on Twitter and is famous for her adult human female t-shirts. Um, Kelly J. Keane's YouTube channel has 53,000 subscribers and a recent clip of her quip, I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is, got 25 and a half million views on TikTok. And um, no, the, I wrote, oh, I've got this, I've made, got this together and put it, it ready for today about four days ago. And since then, since four days ago, um, Kelly J has started phone-ins on her YouTube channel, which is just fantastic. It's so creative, it's absolutely brilliant. And it's, it's so obviously the right thing to do to have these phone-ins there. It's just brilliant. And I, I mean, just every week, um, Kelly J is coming up with new fantastic ideas. And then there's this idea of femili feminism, which is again, very, very interesting. Now, so Kelly J is going to give a talk, a short talk, and then there's, will be space for questions. Put questions in the Q&A. And then we'll get Kelly J to answer some of the questions you have space and then also get Julia and Isabella on to have a bit of a chat. So thank you so much for coming, Kelly J. And over to you. Well, Julia is here and also Sheila is in the chat. Um, it's thanks to their perspectives that I was able to really get to grips with this issue very, very early on. Um, and I'm absolutely privileged to consider both of those women my friends uh, but along with Venice Allen uh, Julie and I went for a trip uh, that we paid for uh, it wasn't with Nazi gold after all um, and we went to Washington um, to meet up with some of the other women in the chat Leah Keith and Cara Dansky and we um, we sort of formed our friendships there and it was it was on that trip that Julia really managed to sink much of her perspective into my tiny brain um, and it stayed forevermore. Um, and Julia is responsible for convincing Brendan O'Neill uh, not to use uh, the euphemistically, ridiculously called uh, preferred pronouns or what I might just call straight up lies. Um, and then prior to meeting um, women like Julia, I was really lucky to be on Mum's Net and meeting a woman called Dittany, who very similarly didn't suffer fools and was able to speak really, really truthful. And I think the truth is a fundamental kind of underpinning of everything that I do. That's not to say that I'm completely flawless when it comes to being really, really honest, often with myself, uh, but just that Truthful people, irrespective of what their point of view, are people that I'm drawn to over and above people that repeat the same things that I want to hear. Um, and so that's where the whole woman, adult, human, female comes. That's how it's really quite so easy to speak very plainly and directly because I'm actually speaking the truth. And I think when we talk about gender critical, even as an expression, number one, I think gender is the most ridiculous word that I don't, I can't even tell you what it means besides a lot of things to a lot of people and not all of those people will think exactly the same thing about this word. Uh, but also when it comes to sex roles and sex stereotypes, I think they're much more useful. And I can't, <laughs> I can't honestly say that I reject all the ones thrown at women as I sit here with a face full of makeup, um, acrylic nails and an underwired bra. Um, I'm quite happy for some of the uh, sex stereotypes and that doesn't come from an analytical place at all. It just means it works for me on a daily basis. Um, and it probably means that I am a traitor to my uh, female sex class after all. Um, but I'm happy to say when it comes to the sex stereotypes of women and the things that I'm routinely, roundly, often criticised by other women who call themselves feminists, it is my least kind of feminine qualities, if you like. It is the fact that I speak directly. It is the fact that I speak plainly. It is a fact that I'm, I'm not particularly kind. I don't really care what you think of me. I don't particularly care what they think of me either. Um, and I think this means that I am not 
remotely stuck in some sort of feminine, uh, submissive role, despite the fact that I also stayed at home with my children, despite the fact that I was weirdly called a housewife. I don't remember doing any housework during those years. Um, but all of those things, uh, it's completely ironic that the women who call themselves feminists, who put it in their bios, who who uh, maybe even craft their entire profession around this particular word, will act in a way that is really routinely very unfeminist when it comes to their criticisms of me and whether or not I dye my hair, um, and also the way that I behave. And then it comes. Then I come. I'm going to come on to the right. I don't care how a woman votes. I don't care what her political beliefs are. I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm fighting for women's rights, which I feel is a lofty term for what it is that I do, which is just stand and speak the truth. But when I speak on behalf of myself, hopefully two other women, I am speaking to all women. Uh, I saw somebody in the chat today, which I think uh, shame on you, frankly, is that she said, I will not fight for women on the right. Well, I will. And there is absolutely nothing that anybody can do that will make me think that that is not a good thing. Because even if I was the most dyed in the world lefty, which I'm not anymore, but even if I was, I would still want to protect women above, over and above any single one of my political beliefs or their political beliefs. I simply don't understand this division that is man-made. And I mean man in the way like man, penis man. It's a man-made division that only serves against women. It doesn't help any of us to decide that before we are women, we are something else, some other allegiance, some other political persuasion. And often at these, at the top of these pyramids of political persuasion are men benefiting from it. So I, I just simply don't get uh, why any woman would work against other women in that way. Um, so anyway, so uh, I don't care about working with the right. I would I would take money from the devil himself if it meant that we didn't actually mutilate another child um, or we didn't uh, shut another woman's space or we didn't exclude another woman from public or even private sometimes life on the basis of allowing men in those spaces and uh, within those groups. For example, on Facebook, there are endometriosis groups or there are even stillbirth groups where there are fetishy AGPs um, in those spaces pretending to be women. So until that stops, uh, I don't stop. And I hope it means that all women on the basis that I'm a nobody, I'm just an ordinary person, which then makes me sound like I think I'm extraordinary by telling you that I'm ordinary. But I'm just like a regular, normal woman, like anybody else who just said, well, actually, I'm not going to have it. I didn't do it by committee. I didn't do it by collaboration. I'm not asking for permission. I just decided that I wanted to do something and I am doing it. And I implore any single one of you with any grave criticisms about what it is that I do, who I speak to, how I work. Uh, you are more than welcome to eclipse me or just do your own small thing um, and forget that I completely exist and do your own work. I think that is the, that is the best way to shut me up and stop me doing anything. Um, so what I've decided to do is to have a non-hierarchical kind of place in which women can gather. And that is our Speakers Corner events. And they are phenomenal. And anyone can speak about anything they like. And we do say women first. Uh, some men do come along and they are more than welcome. Um, I feel that this is our movement, it annoys me. In the free speech movement, there's barely a woman in it. Um, and so I do feel that this is our movement, whatever it is. I'm happy just to call it a women's movement, to be quite honest, because I think that encompasses everything. Um, and then I do now Turf Talk Tuesdays, which is a phone in. And, you know, we had a woman who's just left the NHS after 20 years and she rang and spoke. Uh, she's a lesbian and she just watched um, LGBT, which we all know to be T, right? She's just watched this pride movement, this male dominated movement just come in and totally um, gaslight the entire institution of the NHS and she's finally had enough. We also got a woman who'd been in care, uh, who worries about what's happening to children in care. Um, and these are just, these are just, there's something really quite magical about 
listening to ordinary people, heartfelt, tell you, tell me, tell all of us just what is happening in their lives. And I think that is far more powerful. And I've been to some of these talks, I'm sure you all have, where there are sort of celebrated um, pedestal women uh, sat at the front and everybody sort of has to sit and listen. Well, that isn't something that I particularly enjoy uh, going to, which is why it's great that this chat is so lively. Um, I don't particularly enjoy going to those sort of very stuffy events. And I think women like to be uh, talked to, not at, and talked with and spoken with and collaborated with so that they feel that they own part of this movement. Um, and that's that's why I, I don't really care whether it's called um, gender critical. I think that's a real bizarre name, but I understand where it comes from because it's it's not radical feminism. Um, it doesn't remotely stand up to scrutiny as Julia has just talked about. Um, and, and who am I to talk about it? I've barely got any qualifications <laughs> at all um, as a woman, let alone as a radical feminist. But when it comes to... Um, any of this, I think a woman's movement is what it is. And that is the biggest qualifier. That's why we came up with feminism at Standing for Women, because it it simply was just understanding what a female is and being able to put us first, because all too often in whatever movement, whether it's um, anti-racism, whether it's the climate, whatever movement women are in, if it doesn't have women in the title, and even sometimes if it does, or even if it has feminism in the title, it manages to centre men. And that is just something that I'm just not happy to do. Um, whether I'm a heterosexual um, patriarchy trad wife, um, or just simply somebody taking a coin from the Heritage Foundation, uh, neither of which are true. But even if it was, I think it's just fundamental that we are allowed to say that women are enough and we are allowed to center women without caveats, without explanation and without asking for permission. So I do believe that's something that we do here at Standing for Women. And I think that's something that I do because I rarely ask permission for anyone, uh, from anyone for anything. So moving forward, we do Speaker's Corner at the last Sunday of every month. And then mid-month, we try and go to somewhere completely different where we know that for some women, it's just simply not uh, affordable, uh, both time-wise or financially, to come to London. And so we will, these are the cities that we're doing. 18th of September is, we've already got 300 women committed to come into the event in Brighton. Uh, the more the merrier. We know the trans activists will come. Uh, we practically extend a very warm invite to each and every one of them. Um, but you women, you have to come. Uh, we'll also be seeing Newcastle, Plymouth, Cardiff and Birmingham are some other cities that we are planning. But um, if you want a voice and you feel that it's very difficult to get one and nobody is listening, then I promise you at Standing for Women, uh, we will offer you the microphone. We will offer you uh, our YouTube audience. Uh, but you are more than welcome, each and every woman, whether you're on the right or the left or somewhere in between or you really can't be asked with politics at all. How do you keep going? Um, and also, where do you get your ideas from? Now, you said a little bit from, uh, uh, you've got some ideas from some, a few other women, Julia Long and Sheila Jeffries and the, the woman on uh, Mumsnet. But where do you where do you work out your ideas? Because you're so creative. Well, I think that's the, the thing is, Joe, I don't really work them out. I just think I can do them. And I'm, I, I've always, I mean, I'm not always right, but I will just do it. Um, to, even when I was a little kid, you know, it's just like if my bike had a puncture, I thought I could fix it. And then I just find out a way to do it. So it really is just a, might be a stupidity. It might be an arrogance or just being plain obnoxious. But I sort of think, well, if I think it's a good idea, then maybe it is a good idea and I'll just do it. Um, the, the call ins. Uh, I did have a friend who suggested it about a year ago and I just totally dismissed it out of hand. And then I did a talk radio thing and they said their phone um, lines had never been so busy. Brilliant. And so I thought, OK, well, let's do it then. But, you know, I'd suck it and see it doesn't always work that well. My technical ability is not great, but it it's just about if I think it's a good idea, I'm just going to do it. And the fact that I work mostly on my own means that I don't have to run it by anybody who's then going to 
tell me all the reasons why I shouldn't do something. Why weren't you invited to the JK Rowling <laughs> lunch? I thought, like, <laughs> I've got an answer for that, but tell us what you think. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why wouldn't I be? I mean, maybe it's because I haven't done enough. I don't know. Um, I think I've been, look, I, I, I think it's called blotting your copybook. And I probably did that early on. I was probably a little less guarded and probably talked far too much about men in dresses as opposed to women and women's spaces. And so I might have made myself um, uh, not appropriate for polite society. And it's something that I have really considered because clearly what I want is I want as many people as possible to hear the words I'm saying um, rather than be able to just dismiss me out of hand. So maybe that's why. And look, I've been very, I'm I'm very def <laughs> badly defamed about the things that I have done, which I really, really haven't. Um, and the things that I've said and what they might mean. Um, I feel rather vindicated this week, um, uh, quite sorrowfully that... Obviously, we now have the Telford grooming gang um, report, which I'm telling you, I cannot understand why more people aren't talking about it, to be quite honest. I think this, it's weird. Um, and certainly some of the people that maybe, maybe um, are ingratiated into those sort of polite circles. Uh, and I know that some of those women have even done work, but it's it's weird that there isn't more... You know, you'd think that would be all we were talking about, really. Um, so I do feel that some of my comments regarding grooming gangs, um, or rather child rapists, men that gather together to rape children, as opposed to like a grooming gang, it just sounds like a little bit of a, mm. a nice gathering of people. But, um, you know, I, I do feel that those accusations, they have now been put very much into their correct context. But I think that's why. I think if you if you listen to enough people, there's enough stuff said about me that seem to have stuck. Somebody mentioned uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, I really want to go to Northern Ireland. Um, so we at Standing for Women have local groups, which are women who can use what I believe to be a relatively well recognisable sort of branding of Standing for Women, the adult human female dictionary definition, etc. Although it's not my definition, um, but I will take it and I will certainly, um, you know, if somebody writes a book and says that I invented that definition. I'm happy with that lie. Um, so, yeah, Standing for Women uh, does this local thing, local at Standing for Women, if you want to make your own group. Our first group, uh, one of our first big groups is Northern Ireland. And so, yes, I really do want to go there. Um also, just to let everybody know, uh, sorry to use this as an announcement. Um, on the 31st of July, we've got The Economist coming to film as part of their Culture Wars documentary. They're going to come and film Speaker's Corner. So if you want to be involved in that, that would be great. Um, as far as I'm just going to return to those comments with Julia. Um, it's absolutely essential that I understand, even if I do wear this makeup and, and I do dye my hair and I do all these things, it's absolutely fundamental that I understand that there is a reason that I do those things. I acknowledge that I do them not as part of um, some sort of free choice that I've made, but I understand that why I'm doing that. And I absolutely agree that, and it, I'm not speaking for anybody here, just myself, but you know, young women now, I caught a glimpse of, oh, the hell on earth that is Love Island. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how it's become a programme, but you sort of catch a little glimpse of that and you think, by God, there needs to be some, there needs to be some antidote to that where girls are, you know, I, I know people in sexual health clinics who are seeing girls come in um, and they are girls still. Uh, with bacterial infections where they are stripping themselves of every single minute body, uh, bit of body hair. Um, and it's, it's really frightening. So um, yeah, it's, it's really scary. That's why I think I'm, I may not have the courage to live by um, radical feminism. And I certainly, I really, really don't. I think it probably does take an awful lot of courage to step out of our indoctrination. Um, but I think it would be a crying shame if we didn't at least campaign to get radical feminism put into schools. So um, 
these, you know, they can get transgenderism into schools, right? We can even talk about kink in schools, apparently. That needs to go on the PSHE. But I think feminism, certainly radical feminism, would be a dirty word. So that is something that Standing for Women, we have talked about. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in charge of that. That would be ridiculous. Uh, but I certainly think that it would be a valuable campaign to get radical feminism into schools so that girls at least have a choice. But um, I won't wax lyrical about that because it would make me somewhat of a hypocrite. Um, but yes, do come to the Speakers' Corners event. Do try and do your activism on your own. Don't wait for permission, women. Uh, you'll be waiting a mighty long time until someone tells you that what you have to say is valuable enough to take up some space um, in other people's heads. Um, and I'm happy to say I seem to live rent free in many a feminist head these days. 